Hello and welcome to this review of my Low Free 1% mechanical keyboard. This was a commercial donation by Low Free. They offered it to me and I said that I didn't think I'd be able to give it a very positive review, especially considering what's coming up later this year. But they wanted to donate it anyway and it seemed like a bit of fun, so I said yes. I must admit it's better in some ways than I thought, yet it also has some weaknesses that I didn't see coming. So let's start with the name first. It's marketed as a 1% keyboard, as I mentioned before, with their slogan, to be the 1%. Now, I see a few problems with this. First, they call it a 1% keyboard because it's largely transparent. But this is very different from what any keyboard enthusiast would think of when you say 1% keyboard, which is more along the lines of this. Second, the slogan to be the 1% makes little sense to me, and worse, they cut it off halfway the second percentile circle, which makes it look like to be the 19 euros, which would be a very enticing price tag for a keyboard like this. However, it's not 19 euros, it's 220 at the time of writing. And I'm kind of speechless at that. <laughs> They've sent me over two, this white one and this orange soda model, which is even more garish in an orange and teal color scheme. Interestingly, both use white only backlight, which is a funny choice. Now, if you want white lights, you basically have to use white only LEDs, as white looks really bad if you try to make it out of RGB LEDs. The colors are never right and not bundled properly, so it looks like a mess, usually a kind of sickly pale yellow with flares of red, blue and green everywhere on the keyboard. I reviewed an old Logitech with monochrome white backlight ages ago that had the same train of thought, and I think it's the right one for if white light is what you want, even if that makes the keyboard look kind of boring. On the orange soda model, the white light results in the keyboard not really looking all that orange nor all that teal, which may or may not be to your liking. Personally, I'm a bit ambivalent about it. However, apart from the shape of the lettering on this model, which is... Yes! The lettering is also white, and while it's difficult enough to read with the lighting off, it's impossible to read with the lighting on, so that seems like a weird choice. The legends are also more summer-themed on this one, a bit funky, and I think not in a good way, to be honest. The white model is much more legible and serious looking, also better looking in my opinion. By the way, the legends on the keycaps are huge on both models. It reminds me of that EZ Eyes keyboard, almost like it's made for people with bad vision, which again may or may not be to your liking. The font is, I guess, about as serious as you can get away with on a model that otherwise looks like this. As a side note, I should point out that the keycaps are spherical topped, if you hadn't spotted that. And not only that, they're thick and hollow as the stems are fixed to a bottom piece to which the top of the keycap connects. This is a very clever idea, as I'm sure that connecting the stem to the top of the keycap would have given a very ugly light distribution through them. So that's a very nice touch. By the way, I had planned to open these keycaps up, stick something inside, and then show them off with the backlight shining through, which sounded like a cool idea. Unfortunately, as it turns out, these are fucking impossible to open. There's little tabs on them on the underside, but I broke them off from both of these keycaps and they still won't open, so I have no idea how you're supposed to open these. So, yeah, that's a shame, but I guess there's a limit to what you can do with them. The hollowness and thickness also gives a very unique typing sound that's almost certainly the best aspect of the whole keyboard in my opinion. By the way, they're made out of polycarbonate, which may be the first time I'm trying out PC keycaps, interestingly. I'll give you a quick sound test so you can hear what I'm on about. Honestly, not that bad, is it? Now, another aspect of the transparency is the switches that they use, which are kale jellyfish switches, pre-lubed. They're almost completely transparent themselves, including the slider on the colorless model, but they use orange sliders for the orange keys on the soda model. The housings are apparently made out of polycarbonate on these as well, and the sliders are nylon.
These switches are reasonably smooth, nothing too special, but they are light linears. And although I like light linears, these are far too sensitive. I'm constantly actuating them just by the weight of my fingers. It's really annoying, got me killed a bunch of times while gaming too. I have the same problem with Cherry MX Red. Strangely, the official force curve and specs for these switches suggest a 50 gram actuation force, which is 5 grams stiffer than MX Red, and a preload of 40, which is 10 grams stiffer, and based on these numbers, I wouldn't have expected these to be so overly sensitive. I tried comparing them side by side, but MX Red are much scratchier, of course, so it's kind of hard to gauge. I must say, they don't feel massively stiffer, though. Now, of course, the switches and the keycaps are transparent, but neither the plate, nor the PCB, nor the cases, which makes the claim of 1% even more spurious. I mean, it's not like you can look through the whole, or even most of the keyboard, just the top layer. In my end of year video, I'll be showing you something that does transparency, and especially backlighting, a lot better, and everything else too, come to think of it, which is one of the reasons why I didn't think this would be a very positive review. They sure do like to tote it as such though. The website claims, and I quote, low free 1% is designed as a totally see-through, no it isn't, mechanical keyboard finished with transparent keycaps, switches, and chassis, no it isn't. On the front, it even says transparent all the way, on a very obviously non-transparent plaque, on a very obviously non-transparent case. However, it's probably a good thing that they didn't make it fully transparent. Remember these? It's an old Apple keyboard, often known as the Chow board. Why? Because you can see keyboard Chow accumulating in it. These are notorious for gathering skin flakes, food bits and other crap in them, and displaying them for all the world to see, no less. Not a good idea. So, again, it's probably for the best that they didn't actually deliver on their promise here. Build quality wise, it's not bad, very plasticky but quite dense at just over 800 grams, or in Imperial units, which is pretty okay for a board this size I guess. It barely flexes at all, and it's even held together by screws. Simple, small flip out feet, but rubber shod, which is a nice touch, and it's got Bluetooth 2, which you can toggle with this button next to the button that allows you to toggle between Windows and an even worse operating system. Also, on this side, you can see a demonstration of a rather glaring disadvantage of such a shiny case. I also don't like that it's such a small form factor, but that's very personal, and at least it's got dedicated arrow keys and a delete key. Two different function keys as well, by the way, this one and this one. It's quite complicated in that regard, and although the secondary legends are color-coded to help with this, it's very hard to read them because of the way the keyboard looks. Overall, it comes very much across as a fairly mediocre keyboard, but with interesting keycaps and a pretty good typing sound, plus a wealth of white light, if that's what you're into. Some of the things on this board are kind of crappy, like I mentioned, but nothing is exceedingly bad, it's just a bit... <laughs> useless. Now, here's where I bring the price point of $220 back for a bit. Now, see, I mainly review expensive keyboards nowadays because I'm really not going to waste my time looking at some just keyboards. I like to cover things that are interesting or special or innovative somehow, and you tend to not get those at a cheap price point anymore. Normally, I don't mind a high price point if it's got something to show for it. The SteelSeries Apex Pro is $160, but it's got superb linear switches, and it's got adjustable actuation. Similarly, the Wooting 2. Both are excellent boards and well worth the money in my opinion. The Model F Repro keyboard starts at $355, but it's a fucking brand new Model F keyboard with capacitive buckling springs in an all-metal case. I mean, I'd call that a steal, if anything. Even that MM Studio Class 80 keyboard I reviewed recently came to well over $400, but that was a metal brick with a very good-looking design and about 10 billion different dampening things included. Again, not cheap, but I can excuse a high price point if you get something special in return. This is $220, but it's got nothing special to show for it, apart from the caps, which are definitely cool, but they might as well have just sold them as a kit. They're uniprofile, so they would be amenable to more boards, provided they'd give a more expanded set, of course. The board itself adds absolutely nothing. It's not even transparent like they're marketing it as. I just don't see why anyone would pay this amount of money for this. 
that 19 euros it almost suggests it costs that would have been excellent great buy i'd have been recommending it to loads of people cheap keyboard of the century but this price point for this keyboard makes very little sense to me that's it for this review thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it and following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard